Hi, my name is Serge, and in this tutorial, the focus is on Revit LT. Revit LT receives some heavy criticism within the industry, mainly for its lack of some essential functions. But what if these functions are not actually missing? Let's look at busting the five biggest LT myths. Welcome to PowerSurge where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content. The first myth is that it's not possible to create model in place content with Revit LT. Well, that is a myth. Let me show you how. It just requires a little abstract thought. I say abstract because we are not using the tool in the way that it was intended. On the architecture tab, find the wall tool and then click on in place wall. Now, as the name suggests, it's obvious that this is a tool for walls, but we can re-engineer the workflow. So let's continue. Give the in place wall a name. Now create the form. With these tools, we can create whatever form we like, such as a cylinder. Okay, so that's done and that's great. But if I finish the form, it will still be associated to the wall category, which is not ideal. But what if the category could be changed? To do this, we need to extract the family and to extract the family, we need to group it. So while in edit mode, click create group. The group name is not so important. This is just a sacrificial element to extract the in-place family. Then from the file tab, find save as. Then on the side menu, find library. And from the side menu again, find group. Here, Revit is saying that the group, which is actually the in-place family, will be saved as an RFA which is the native extension format for Revit families. Then finish the model in place family. So to recap, what we have done is use the wall category to create an in place family. We then exported that element as an RFA. Now we can open the exported RFA. And in here, we can change the category. Once that's done, save to overwrite and load into project. Now here you can see the original wall in place element and the reorganized version. I think we can safely call that one busted. The next myth is that Revit LT doesn't contain the design options function. Well, if I go to the manage tab, I can show you that yes, it does. It just needs to be turned on. To turn on design options, click on the file tab and find options. From there, find user interface and check this box. Nice and easy. This next one is not so much of a myth buster as it is a workaround. The issue is that Revit LT doesn't have filters. Well, it doesn't. However, a definite workaround is using object styles. Let me show you. As I zoom in here, focus your attention on the colored outline. As I change views, notice that the same family has a different colored outline similar to what colored filters can do. So in a tiled view comparison, the same family has different colored outlines applied. Let me show you how this was done by editing the family.
This family contains model groups. So first I need to edit the group. As I click the model line, draw your attention to the highlighted zones. These have been assigned to a specific object style. On the Manage tab, find Object Style, then create a new subcategory. Here it is in plan view. The subcategory is a built-in parameter. As we switch back to the project, we can see how this could be useful as a potential alternative. In the visibility graphics, find the family category and then notice the object style is also listed. This is what Revit means when it calls this a subcategory. And this is view dependent, meaning that the color can be changed per view like this. So although the color is not driven by a parametric rule, the option to colorize instances of the same family differently is definitely possible. So I think with a little more application, we can definitely call this one plausible. The next myth relates to Revit LT not enabling collaboration with non-Revit users. This is definitely busted with the inclusion of the shared views tool. This can be found on the Manage tab. Basically, this tool works together with the Autodesk Viewer, allowing for integrated collaboration. To learn more about this function, watch this tutorial by clicking the link in the descriptions box. The last myth is that Revit LT doesn't have a bind function for linked models. This can also be busted by using the loaders group function. Notice that this prompts the bind link dialog just like for Revit. To learn the process in greater detail, check out this video by clicking the link in the descriptions box. After busting these myths, would you consider Revit LT as a viable tool? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Well, that's the end of this Revit LT special. I hope that you learned something new and that you have a new appreciation for Revit LT. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now.